Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. This is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. Kyle McCarter is a state senator from the 54th Illinois Senate District. Prior to redistricting, he was appointed to a Senate seat in the old 51st District, replacing Senator Frank Watson, and won election in 2010. After redistricting, the senator won election to the new 54th District seat in 2012, and then again in 2014. His state Senate term ends in 2018. Senator McCarter recently decided he will not seek re-election to the Senate. Instead, he announced on October 7th that he is seeking the GOP nomination to the 15th District of the U.S. House of Representatives. That's Republican John Shimkus's district. At the announcement, Senator McCarter said the 15th District is one of the most conservative in the country, and our voice should be the loudest in the conservative issues. The senator believes he is the more conservative of the two. During this half hour, we will discuss his reasoning for the primary challenge of a sitting Republican congressman. State Senator Kyle McCarter, welcome to the conversation. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you back. Yeah. Um, it hasn't been that long, and no. we're glad to have you. Last time you were here, we didn't have a discussion about uh, U.S. Congress. We were just right. talking about your, uh, your Senate seat. And so what's changed from, I believe it was August, when you were here August 11th, right. I believe it was, to now? Well, you know, I've never, I've never intended to make a career out of, of politics and to stay in the Senate uh, for a long time. I, you know, I, I believe in term limits. I believe, it's, I believe the Founding Fathers uh, thought it was best for, for us to come from the real world, from our profession, serve for a time, and then get out and bring the experiences that we have in life to, you know, uh, to the legislature to speak for the people. That's what I've done. It's been almost seven years, uh, and I will not be running in 2018 again. Uh, I'm committed to term limits in the Senate, and I'm committing to term limits in Congress as well as I run for the 15th Congressional District. You're a businessman, aren't you? I am. Just talk a little bit about what you're the other part of your life is like? Well, I, I, you know, I'm one of the few business people, and I know I'm the only manufacturer in the, in the legislature in Illinois. Uh, I run two small manufacturing companies. Uh, we do uh, dip molded plastics for the power utility industry, and uh, then we have another business that does fitness equipment and uh, emergency respiratory equipment. So, you know, I tell people I have a legitimate way of making a living, and mm -hmm. it's not as a politician. And, you know, the plus there, and, and that's, it's not to be proud in any way, but that the plus there is that I can bring that experience to the legislature. Mm -hmm. And also, though, in your private life, in your business life, you're actually living with all the regulations that the state and the federal government uh, imposes upon manufacturers. So you have right. a pretty good idea yeah. of what the real world effects are. Can yeah. you discuss? Well, it's, you know, it's one thing to say, we need less regulations. But, you know, who's going to argue best for that, right? Who's going to really be able to articulate that better than someone that has experienced the pain of regulations? Who's experienced so much, you know, uh, increasing cost of doing business that I had to take home less to my family. And if you have to be the one who's risk everything and then come and tell them and tell your wife, you know, everybody got a paycheck this week but us. Boy, I tell you what, you're motivated to get out there and work the next week to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been motivated to go to Springfield and fight against excess of regulations, uh, excess of taxation, and, and fight against those things because the, the opportunity that I have, if I'm deprived of that opportunity, I'm able to produce less for the people in my community. I'm able to produce less jobs, and, 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 and that pains me. So I've, I've gone through the experiences of, of regulation, and uh, I think it's better to have somebody that can fight because uh, I know, workers' compensation, I mean, I've, 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 I've paid for claims that I shouldn't have paid for. I've paid for fraudulent claims. What do you mean by that? Well, when, when someone... People may not understand When what workers' you're compensation about. is there to protect a company as an insurance policy from uh, catastrophic claims, all right? If where some, people get injured, injured at your injured job site. Injured in your job site. Right. But if the cause of the accident is not the workplace, 
the law is so bad in Illinois today that the employer still has to pay. And it's not even fraud. Well, That's that how bad worker, the law is. Workers' compens. I thought that, that the idea of workers' compensation yeah. was a worker works for you, gets hurt on the job, can't work, and That's so right. in order to have a continuing wage for the family, right. that the state has this insurance program. Right. At least it's, that's it's, my that's, understanding. It's, it's, of that's why they call it workers' compensation and not playing softball on the weekends to we, you know, wee hours in the morning, drinking too much compensation. It's it's not because you did things in you know in your private life that were silly, or you have an accident at home working in your yard that you. It's not a, a system that you can bring that to the workplace and say, oh, you know, oh my back. Uh, the, the, the law is bad in Illinois. It needs to change. We expect it to. The, I'm, I'm a co-sponsor of that legislation. The, um, the governor has put that on the table as one of the budget items that he wants, to, he wants to see move forward, and we expect to see that soon. But it's easier to speak on those issues if you've had to experience them. And so that's, that's been good for me, and it's going to be good for me going, going to Washington as well. Well, you just spoke about a state issue of the workers' compensation. Can you address a issue that was more of a federal issue that has affected your manufacturing jobs? Well, taxation is one. I mean, you know, um, the tax code needs to be much more simple and, 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 much, and much, much flatter. Uh, you know, I, I, I've 15 years. I've, I've str you know, I've struggled. I mean, the first three, three years, Victoria taught in East St. Louis to keep, you know, to keep our family fed, and she invested in that. So that's why she's uh, the, the co-owner of the business because she, you know, invested early. But uh, we fought and fought and fought, and then we, we get to a break-even point. We get to where we might start making a little money. Then we get started, We have some really good years. In those really good years. We have to give most, you know, a big majority of it back. What about all the years that we, you know, we struggle just to get it going? Mm -hmm. And when the, when, the, when the federal government takes that, which I think is the, the, that excessive tax, when they take that, they, they don't just hurt me. They hurt the families in my community. They hurt me. That they, they hurt my opportunity to hire more people, to buy more equipment that people in the, that, that are, you know, that my neighbors fix and they build. Uh, it, it's, it's less for my community when they take that away. I'd rather take that money and invest it back in the community. Now, I've heard talk about OSHA and its effect on business. Yeah. Have you had uh, an impact from OSHA? Well, we, my business has not because we, we've, we've got a, I think we've, we've got a very safe workplace under control, so we've mm -hmm. never had issues there. But the, um, you know, the, the great thing about technology today is uh, the workplace is a pretty safe workplace because there's there is uh, there's transparency, and there's I mean there's there's this uh, the ability to photo you know not just photograph but videotape any anything anywhere you are, and and that uh, and that transparency I think provides accountability, mm -hmm. and so we have a lot of I mean. Uh, in, in years past of the, you know, the sweatshops in the past, I mean, they didn't have, they didn't, weren't able to, you know, videotape their employer and send it out on the web. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of transparency today, but okay. those, those burdens just limit the opportunity that I have to help my community and hire more people. Well, I asked you that because I wanted to get some idea of what you thought, uh, of what the federal government has been doing and what it is if you were to become a sitting congressman that you would try to do in order to make life better for manufacturers so that then they could hire more people and pay them better wages. Well, I, th I think the federal government has just gotten way too big. Uh, I, I think they, um, you, you've, you've got a Department of Education that uh, is way too big, Department of Commerce that's way too big. You've got EPA that uh, is, is, uh, should probably be cut in half. And, um, you know, uh, the, there's the cost of that and then the cost that it, it brings on to employers like me. Uh, we've got to reduce, reduce the size of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that, now we're to the million dollar question. Yeah. What is why? it? <laughs> yes, why, why are you running against <laughs> yeah, well, John Shemkis? Well, and by the way, just by, so everybody knows, yeah. I have known uh, Mr. Shemkis since before he was uh, even the treasurer of Madison County. 
Um, and he has been a guest here on numerous occasions, sure. so we know him pretty well. Right. We know you, and so I want to know why it is that you think that uh, you would be better placed in the uh, United States Congress than you are in the Illinois Senate. Well, uh, this, is, this is one of the first times in 20 years that people are going to have a decision as to which Republican they put forward in the general election. Uh, they haven't had a choice. And, and I believe 20 years is too much. I believe in term limits so much that I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, terming, I'm term limiting myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe, I'm, I'm with the governor on this one. The governor himself said even that good people like John uh, should term limit themselves. I'm with him. Mm -hmm. um, after 20 years, uh, that's enough. And, and also, John made a commitment. He, he made a promise, and he got elected when he first came in, making a promise that he was for term limits and he would limit his term. He's broken that promise. I'm keeping that promise. Uh, the other issue is this. You know, pl what has happened in Planned Parenthood is just, it's, it's, um, it's awful. I mean, I had a hard time watching the videos. I really did. And some I just couldn't continue watching. Um, and I was appalled by it. Many are appalled by it. Uh, John actually marched in front of the Planned Parenthood, uh, you know, buildings. Uh, saying he was in opposition. He then marched to Washington, D.C. and voted to fund Planned Parenthood. I'm not going to sit around and watch that take place. The people of this district are committed to protecting life, and they expect our, our, our representative to do what they say they're going to do, not tell us one thing in the district and then go to Washington, D.C. and do another. Um, there, there, there are numerous other issues, but there's been a couple of times now that John's voted for amnesty. Uh, I believe in legal immigration only. And I think given, the, given what's taken place just in the last recent weeks, um, we have to, the compassionate decision is to say no to, uh, to these refugees coming in. And the compassionate you're decision. You're referring to the Syrian refugees? This, I'm sorry. The, the, or the, are you talking I'm, about I'm, I'm, the I'm, South the, American or, no, no, or the Central Syri American the, the, refugees? The, the, no, the, the, the Syrian refugees. The, the, the compassionate response is to just say no and protect the American people. And, and it's not, I mean, there are plenty of widows and orphans to take care of. I mean, part, part, of, my, part of my life and, part, you know, and my wife, you know, Victoria and I's life is to, we, we take care of a lot of wid widows and orphans uh, overseas. But, you know, there, at this time, the best thing is to put a pause on immigration and make sure you can pr uh, protect the American people. And voting for amnesty is not the way you do that. Mm -hmm. uh, upholding legal immigration only is the way to do it. So there, there is a clear choice here. Um, this, this, is not, this is not personal. This is based on uh, what our representative's done. And, and he said what he said he was going to do and what he's done. Mm -hmm. I have, I, I, I am convinced that I have the energy, the ideas, and the track record as a reformer in this state to stand up against special interest groups. I have the track record of, as a reformer to go to Washington, Washington and make a difference. Mm -hmm. As soon as you announced your intention to run for this, uh, for this House seat, there were stories that appeared in the local newspapers throughout the district about you uh, having hired a particular person um, to work on your Senate, I guess your Senate work, mm -hmm. but then this person is now involved in your, your uh, run for the U.S. House, and they, whoever they are, have made a deal about this. Would you like to describe what you think the issues are and what the accusations are. There's, there's nothing but an accusation. Uh, there, there's no issue there. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, well, a, I'm a businessman. I, 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 uh, I calculate risk and I make sure that I do everything uh, according to the law. And there's, there's laws in their state and there's federal laws and you have to abide by both of them and I have. So that's uh, nothing more than folks really not wanting me in this race. And, you know, they, the, the establishment uh, doesn't want someone that's going to go to Washington and perhaps not vote the party line. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they don't want somebody that's going to be loud like me and, and say, listen, there are times that Republicans are wrong. And we need to say we're wrong and we need to, we, we need to go a different direction. And I've done that in the state. 
Uh, I, would, I will do the same thing in Washington. And you know what? The, the reason the establishment is, is taking a stand against me is because of power and money. It's power and money with a sitting 20-year congressman. And that's the reason they're sticking with him. But you know, the great news here is that the people are with me. This, the, the people deserve a victory in this race. The people deserve this victory. This is not about me, because I'm only going to be there for eight to 10 years. I mean, the, the victory here is for the people. If you can't go to Washington and, and that, that run can't translate into something good coming back for the people, that person shouldn't be there. If all it does is translate into millions of dollars raised by special interest groups going into your campaign fund to where you can wheel power throughout the state, that's not the right thing. That doesn't help a farmer struggling to make a living. That doesn't help some, some, some man, and, man and woman who are working so hard in a dairy farm that they can't, ex they can't afford the $250,000 automated milkers, right? But they have to get up early morning and work till night, work hard their whole life. That doesn't translate anything good for them. And so you, you look at veterans. What, what, what good does becoming the energy chairman, which is what my, what, what my opponent's you know, aspirations are. After 20 years, he just wants to be a chairman of a committee. You know what? If it takes you 20 years, you probably shouldn't have been there. It, you know, somebody said, well, why, why would you only be there eight to 10? Because this is not my life. It's not a career. I'm there to get a lot done in a short amount of period of time. And eight, eight to 10 years is not a short amount of time. But you know, this needs to translate into something good for the people, not just good for somebody's campaign fund. So specifically, what would you propose and try to get passed in this eight to 10 years that you well, hope to be in the United States Congress? Well, one, one thing is this. You know, we, we've seen where the Veterans Administration has gone through all kinds of scandals, even now, even one, one yeah. just, just came out yesterday. And so, you know, here we have a West Point grad, and, I, and I'm Pretty, I'm fond of. You're talking about I'm, Mr. Shemp. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. fond of the guys that go to the service academy because I got a son who went to, you know, went to the Air Force Academy. So I know how difficult it is. I, mm -hmm. I know it's a tough, it's a, it's a commitment. But you know what? We have someone that has the bully pulpit of that of that degree and that background. Where's the defense of veterans? Where is someone saying, listen, we need a forensic audit in the Veterans Administration? We need a forensic audit that says, listen, we're going to get rid of the waste, fraud, and abuse and bring back real health care, real health care to our veterans. Mm -hmm. Well, you know why? You know why you don't make that an issue? It's because the veterans aren't going to pay you. They're not like the big oil companies. They're not like the big, you know, refineries. They're not going to pay you. Now, I support those guys, too. You say, what's the difference? Well, hey, I'm going to support less regulation for oil companies, petroleum companies, anybody that's going to invest in people and invest in workers. But at the same time, you've got to defend these veterans. I mean, my dad, my dad, you said, well, why are you going? Part of it's I'm going for my dad. My dad's got Alzheimer's. I mean, he, he, lives, in, he lives in a city with, with a VA hospital. It's fine until he has an emergency. It's fine until he has dental problems. And it's fine if that doctor happens to be there. But you know what? Our veterans ought to have a gold card. Our veterans ought to have the same gold card that congressmen have. Well, do you feel that perhaps like some have said that the veterans ought to be, that the entire structure of the Veterans Administration is outdated, it comes from the Civil War period where health care was not generally available across uh, you know, various communities, yeah. and so VA was invented in order to support um, the veterans, but now that we have hospitals and doctors spread throughout the country, that perhaps VA ought to be just another card that is handed to people so that they can go to regular doctors and regular hospitals. And, and I, I believe, I think they ought to have a gold card. I think they have a card that puts them to the front of the line that they can take next door and they can take to the next block and they don't have to say, hey, when can you see me in a, in a, in a hospital that's three to four hours away? That's not right. I mean, just today I, 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 was, I was listening to the radio and there's a group that's gonna put uh, medical centers at the Metro link stops. You think, why were they going to do that? So people have real access to care. I mean, why wouldn't we be thinking of the same thing for our veterans? And, you know, these are the kinds of things I'm willing to take up the fight. The veterans don't have to pay me a dime. Mm -hmm. They don't have to bill my campaign fund. 
uh, I, you know, if, if not too many people want to serve, I'll serve on that. Mm -hmm. Because that way I can bring something, I can really bring something home to the people I support. Because I don't have to build up a fund to stay there for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have $1.2 million sitting there to where I can fend off anyone that says, hey, I have a chance of winning. And you know, that's the thing. Some people say, well, Kyle, I can't, why don't you wait? How long do you want me to wait? I ask them. Another decade? Until I can be appointed to, to, the, you know, to the throne of Congress? I'm not going to wait. Uh, things are happening in this country. We cannot afford to sit back and do things the way we've done them in the past. Well, things, yes, I agree with what you just said. We can't afford to sit and wait anymore. There are many things that are happening in this country and to this country, and so I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Um, we, have, we have several, um, I guess, conflicts that the United States is or could possibly involved in. Uh, of course, we have Islamic terrorism, which is occurring worldwide, or at least within the western uh, within western civilization we saw that in paris we saw that in san bernardino mm -hmm. we've seen it in a number of other cases in the united states uh, we also have the uh, the uh, the chinese government is now moving its military into the uh, into the china sea in a big way in a way that hasn't been seen since the end of world war ii uh, and then we have the russians who have uh, first taken over the crimea which they used to own back during the Soviet days, and now they would like to uh, have at least half of Ukraine, a country which, by the way, used to have nuclear weapons, gave them up on the deal that the West was going to protect them from Russia, mm -hmm. <laughs> and now we're kind of reneging on that deal. It's a complicated world, isn't it? So, yes, yeah, so <laughs> now I'm going to ask you what you know about all of this and what you would have to offer as a congressman, because these are issues of life and death. They are, and, and I think those are things that, um, you know, I'm going to have to shift my thinking to. I mean, I, I have, people ask me, you know, they say, Kyle, you're pretty, narrowly focused on state issues. I have been. I put blinders on and I've gone after a few issues in this state. Yes. I'll, do, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do the same thing in, in, in Congress. But you know, I, I have noticed and, and I've had a little experience uh, uh, not just traveling overseas but dealing overseas and, and uh, um, we've missed opportunities to invest and I will say this, the only thing, the one I don't by experience is we've, we've missed opportunities to invest in African nations. In, in, in the area of power and infrastructure. Uh, we, we, the, the president just committed just months ago uh, for, for billions of dollars to go into power infrastructure in East Africa. And you know, the, the best way to, to prevent uh, terrorist cells from, from you know, developing and, and taking root in those countries is to help the people early. And, and help them in ways that lifts them up, not just by, you know, not just food shipments, but the way to electrify that country, bring the businesses up. And, you know, to, to do that for a, a power base, a base load power, what they need, you know what they need? They need coal. What do we have plenty of here in this state? We have so much, we, we ship it out of the state. They could, they could they'll buy our high sulfur coal and, uh, and we could have a win-win situation to where we even help them build those power plants with American ingenuity. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we should have made those investments earlier. Now the Chinese have come in, for instance, in Kenya. They came in, they built all the road infrastructure. What do they get? Duty-free status. Now they've, they've flooded that country with all their goods. They have a, they have a, 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 a position in that country that we're not going to be able to overcome anytime soon except if we invest in power. So there's ways of investing in countries that's smart rather than just giving handouts. You know, you've made an excellent point. By the way, we got about four minutes left okay. here. Um, you made an excellent point. I was surprised when uh, Senator John Kerry became Secretary of State yeah. John Kerry, and among the earliest statements that he made uh, was that uh, he was just surprised, shocked, at how invested the Chinese were in Africa. And I'm like, really, you're just learning this? Because, you know, uh, there are those of us who have been following the entrance yeah. from the 1990s forward, especially in the early 2000s, of Chinese investment in uh, mineral rights 
and of course uh, buying into these various governments like you were just talking about in order <coughs> that they would have uh, access. And they're, you know, unlike the United States, they don't care so much about the human rights that goes on in those countries. Mm -hmm. They simply want access. Right. And uh, we, could have given, we could have given them both. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And so your idea about investing in these countries is is a good idea. Perhaps they need a plastic injection mold <laughs> manufacturing <laughs> company uh, in, in that area as well. Um, one, and we're just going to cover this very briefly. The um, um, this whole thing about the the NSA and our uh, friends in Russia and China who are spying on the United States. Uh, there seems to be a whole lot of spying going on. Um, Lockheed Martin was uh, had their uh, their computers invaded in '09, and lo and behold, all of a sudden the uh, Chinese have a uh, a new uh, aircraft that looks pretty much like the F-35, mm -hmm. and they also have an aircraft that looks pretty much like the uh, what is it, the F-22, and uh, the United States uh, has spends all this time and energy uh, building or designing stuff but we don't seem to have the money, or at least Congress doesn't appropriate the money, in order to build this where the Chinese are. What would be your, your thinking on increasing uh, our military capabilities? Well, I, I don't, I, I, I will say somewhat related is the Export-Import Bank. Uh, I, I don't think, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that the Saudis need us to bankroll their, uh, their purchase of planes. Uh, very, very few times are, is the Export-Import Bank needed other than to uh, help huge corporations. Oh, I know that, but I'm talking about the United States. We but, are running on the ragged edge. I mean, we barely well, have any planes, we barely have any ships left. One, one, one of the things you can do is, is you can, reduce, you can re reduce the cost of actually producing those. I mean, you, you look at the Davis-Bacon Act, which, which, uh, in, which mandates prevailing wage in any government dollar spent, that's one way you could you could lower the cost, thirty to forty percent, and and that gives you, uh, I'll just I'll get I'll, I'll, I'll just say a plane. We'll use a plane example. That gives you four planes instead of three planes. Mm -hmm. uh, that you know that gives you uh, four tanks instead of three tanks. You can lower the cost by getting rid of that mandate. And, and that's really one of the big differences between myself and my opponent in this race. I mean, that has only been supported by John, the Davis-Bacon Act. I would repeal the Davis-Bacon Act. Mm -hmm. I would vote against it and free up jobs for our people. It'll produce more jobs for our area and give us more the ability to produce more as far as the uh, units, uh, planes for defense, uh, fighters, those kinds of things. And it'll give us, the American people, more buying power with our tax dollars. Thank you very much. I appreciate your coming in yeah. today and making your case as to why you would like to be a United States Congressman in Southern Illinois. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Yeah. And to those uh, who have been listening, I've been speaking with uh, Kyle McCarter. He's a state senator in Illinois, but he would like to be a United States Congressman from the 15th District. Um, I'm sure that those of you who live in the district will be hearing a lot more about this. This program is going to be uploaded to YouTube, so if you missed part of it or would like to show it to others, please uh, go to YouTube. Thank you.